Hey guys, so I just realized I never showed you how to install Roop. I made another video here on how to do the face swapping with it, but we had not actually um, worked through the installation. It's um, This has the potential to be a messy installation because as I mentioned, in a, uh, I did do this on my Patreon site. I had not clicked it over here. Um, these face swapping softwares, there comes with a lot of social pressures around them because people can misuse them, you know. So uh, you get a lot of this, well, why would you even want that? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, because I want to do creative stuff with it that's not necessarily bad. So um, we're going to go through how to use the Roop software, okay, how to install it. Then you can get into the face stuff. We have our other videos on Rope, which actually is going to be way better than this software. But this software still has some really cool stuff to it which is going to be good, still a good part of your arsenal, okay? Um, especially like with the uh, the video streaming face swap and stuff, which is cool. But let's jump into this. I'm hoping this is going to go a little easy, um, but this is not necessarily an easy installation. So first of all, what we're going to do is uh, let's go over to the Internet, and what we're going to do is we're going to type root git, all right? And it's going to bring up these ones. Now, what we're going to do is grab the Count Floyd one, it's called Roop Unleashed. This is going to be um, a, so that it doesn't put squares over people's faces. So, like, if you have a picture of a dude in a muscle shirt or something like that, and it might flag it as inappropriate, uh, and they'll put a square over it. This is going to remove that. So, all we're going to do here is go over here. We can click on code, HTTPS, and then copy this. Okay. So, now that we have that, what we do is hop over to our terminal, okay, and we're going to get clone this okay so find the directory you want to do it and i'll do it in this directory since i already have it installed elsewhere um so we'll just put it here for temp so i'm just going to control oops i've got to type get clone all right now i'm going to type control v that's going to paste that in there i'm going to hit that now it's going to clone it into this directory it shouldn't be a huge um download but it's a down yeah so that was actually real fast later we're gonna have to download some models okay let's go over it's always a good idea to look at the git page um, look at their installation instructions if they have them they don't have them here so oh here's a please refer to this wiki let's click that and we'll go installation so yeah it looks like they discontinued that okay definitely we're going to do this okay this is all big time important stuff um, okay I'm not seeing any other big instructions here okay so let's click back on over to our terminal window now you remember the first thing we always going to do is create a virtual environment so I'm going to go ahead and We'll type conda create. So what we're doing is we're creating a virtual environment. We give it the parameter of name, so this is the name, and then we'll call this uh, group. I'm going to put group two because I already have a group. So we're going to go group two, and then we got to give it a Python. So you don't have to do this, but it's good to do it. Well, Python 3.10.11. So it's going to create our virtual environment. It's going to ask it. Well, it's going to ask us if we want to. We can put yes. Then it's going to go ahead and create this environment along with um, Python 3.10.11 being on there. So, remember now, you've got to activate it. Okay, now we can get into our actual installations. So, I'm going to go ahead and cd into the directory that we're going to be working with, root unleashed. Okay, if I go ahead and try to uh, run it right now, it won't run because it's got packages missing so let's switch back over to the internet figure out what it wants us to do next okay it's going to want us to install the um, requirements so we can just control c this okay and i want to check down here again under where it talked about cuda um okay we'll worry about that later so we're going to click back over to here and um oh well there we are okay so we'll just control V that in there. We're going to install the requirements here. I'm not quite sure what that star does, but well, what it does is it errors it. So let's just get rid of that. And then we're just going to go ahead and run this. Well, oh no, we've, we, we made a big mistake. 
Ha ha! You guys should have caught me on this one. It was a test to see if you were going to catch it. First, we got to make sure that our um, CUDA environment. So we're going to go Conda install dash C NVIDIA. Okay, because we're going to look for an NVIDIA package. If you're not getting the NVIDIA package, go check my other video about how to get the uh, NVIDIA added into your Conda packages. Okay, then we're going to type CUDA toolkit. Well, I'm glad we caught it. Listen, it's a huge, it's an easy mistake to make. And if you don't get these installed first, a lot of the stuff isn't going to work. You're going to try installing your torch. And then it's going to say like, oh, torch was not installed with CUDA support. And you're like, but I've installed torch like five times. And it's because you didn't do it in the right steps. Okay. So before we even get into uh, we, actually let's go ahead and type notepad requirements.txt. I want to show you something here. It's going to open up a notepad window. Let me pause for just a second. All right, and you're going to see here that in this notepad file, this is our requirements file. Again, they always do this. They've got all this torch stuff in the middle. Okay, and I don't understand why they do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete all of this torch. Okay, out of here. Just delete it. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and save this. Okay. The reason we're doing this is because we want Torch installed very first thing. We want CUDA toolkit installed. Then we want to put our Torch. They always put it in the middle, and uh, and it'll really mess you up over time. So let's click back over to here now. Now we save this our requirements. We go back to the internet. This page I've told you 800 million times. Tattoo this on your forehead and get yourself a mirror. Okay. We're gonna type Torch install. We're going to go down here, pip, python, 11.8. I'm going to grab this. This is what we need, okay? This is going to get us the correct torch for um, using with the CUDA cool kit. We're just going to hit control V, enter, and then we're going to go into kind of a long download. So I will pause the video because uh, otherwise I'm going to have to tap dance for you for like the next three to four minutes while this installs. If you have a slower computer, um, it can take even longer than that. But I got a fast computer and this takes several minutes to download. Look, I mean, you can see you got 2.7 gigabytes you got to download, but beyond that, it's got to install. So I'm going to hit pause. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and our torch has installed. So we installed the CUDA toolkit. And then we installed uh, the torch. Okay. Now let's go in here. Now we're going to do our pip install, our dash r. That's telling us that we're going to install from a file, a R stands for read. And then what's the file we're going to read from? Requirements.txt. We removed torch, so it won't reinstall. If we had not done that, we would do this, and then it would uninstall what we just did, and then put the other torch in, and then you would get your like torch not compiled CUDA errors and you're going to be banging your head against the computer and going, yeah, why is this happening? I'm going to say, I told you. I warned you. I pleaded with you day and night. And you didn't listen. So we don't want that. What you want to do is just follow these steps. Um, and we should be gold here. So I tell you, I'm really, while we're waiting, I'm really tempted to eat this raisin, but I'm going to be sitting here chewing. While you're watching, you don't want to watch me chew. I mean, you don't want to watch this stuff, let alone watching me chew. But let's give it a second here. This shouldn't take just more than a minute. If it takes any more longer, we'll hit pause. So as long as stuff keeps moving, we're, we're doing good. Um, now, looks like Gradio is one of the earlier ones. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. It looks like we got a little bit of installing to do. So hold on. I'm going to eat a raisin. We're going to pause. We're going to be back. You ain't even going to notice we was gone. All right, so we have now uh, installed all the requirements. So now we're going to go ahead and run this thing. We're going to go python.run.py, okay? And you're going to see it's going to start downloading uh, the models that we need, face swap and stuff. So we'll sit here. It's going to download a bunch of this stuff. Let me see what I can see here. Okay, hopefully this won't take too long. see a crack your neck <laughs> all right maybe we can pause this again it's got a few of these so you'll just be watching these download when they're done this thing should just pop up into our browser window it uses what's called uh, gradio we'll do another video on how gradio is it's 
essentially a, um, uh, a software that allows you to take input and output and format it uh, for a browser use. It's really cool. So they let you use it for free, you know, for all of your um, own stuff. And then if you're going to do something commercial with it, I think you license it. But Gradio is something that you'll see a lot of. Most of these apps are run in Gradio, and it's nice because it runs straight out of the browser. So, okay, let's pause here. I'm not sure how long this goes. Oh, there it's done. Look at that. See, I, I just about gave up. So we're going to click on over here and look at, so that was actually worked a lot better. You know why that worked a lot better uh, than my first installations this, which caused me a lot of trouble? It's, 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 a, it's a pop quiz. You know why? Because we installed the CUDA toolkit first. And then we installed the torch. And we went into that requirements.txt and we removed the torch stuff from there. If we had not done it, we'd have installed stuff. It would have uninstalled stuff. It would have put there and it wouldn't have worked. So here's your Roop software. It's uh, real easy to, to use. I mean, it's kind of vaguely easy. You grab, click here, your drop file is going to open up a window. Just go find a picture. You know, I'm using Johnny Cash here, whatever. That's going to load for just about a second. And uh, anyway, you, you mess around, so I don't want to, oh, there it goes. I don't really want to wait around this, but click over here on your other one. You can find your videos. I'm not sure if I have any videos. Maybe we could just do a picture. Let's, let's put Johnny Cash on John Wayne's face, okay? So we click this up. We're going to click this guy. Then we're going to click face swap. And this should go ahead and change that. I'll, oh, well, it didn't. Oh, yeah, there it did. <laughs> That's funny stuff. So you do the same thing with videos. You can add videos. Um, if you got a video with multiple faces, you'll click this button over here. It says use face from this frame. And down in here, it'll show you a bunch of faces. Click the one you want, and then you'll say, uh, you know, choose that. I would do it, but I don't think I have any videos here to show you with. Um, Oh, here's Austin Powers one we did. Uh, I think this has already got a face swap on it, but I'll show you. So <laughs> there, look at it, change it over his face. So we could say, if we click this face swap frames, it'll undo it, right? So that's my face on there, and then it's putting Johnny Cash's face on top of that. Um, you can say, use face from this frame. And now we could choose the face we want. I'll pick hers. I'll say, use selected face. Now if I do this, it's going to put it on her, okay? So pretty cool software. You can go different frames. Here we could go it over here. Use face from this frame. Click selected. Well, let's hit refresh there. And I put his face on to there. So same thing when you're done. Oh, one last thing. When you're doing this, you got to select your post-processing. Pro, um, post you could probably just put this one here. This one I typically use. Um, you can play around with them and then just click start and it will go through there and will find all of the faces So there you have it. That was um, Actually a really easy root uh, Installation so yo kudos to me And you enjoy that go ahead and play with that all you want look at the other video on how you can use this software to um actually uh, stream with a face swap, which is very cool. It's going to change my face to whoever on there. And then also check out my other video about Rope, which is the newest version of this and is buggy at the minute, but it's going to be hot once it gets going. So enjoy those. Stay good as always. You know, uh, let me know if you got anything. Oh, hit that like button, please. And uh, stay good. We'll catch up with you on the other side.